Welcome back guys. Today is all about brand people. Brand. Brand is something which like they have vivid colors. The thinking power they have is completely different. And uh, mostly I have someone who who can really tell us how he really puts pictures and imaginations and bring the clear uh, you know concepts to the customer's head. So someone who i know as hussein from hustle kitchen and he has been doing really good job so let me let me check it out like how he really works and how he really thinks how he really you know puts everything into picture keep watching till the end so that you don't miss anything out of it thank you so much hussein for joining me today and it's pleasure to have you it's been like i was thinking about you wanted to have you long time before because you are someone who can add really great value when it comes to sales and marketing and i think more than that Ali, thank you so much first of all for having me it's an absolute yeah. pleasure I, i love your show by the way yeah thank you I, so I'm much saying, I, i love some of the guests so, that you have as well so i'm quite excited to have this conversation with you today thank you thank you so much so firstly uh what you got into this digital communication industry and uh, what was the reason how did you get into it what's the story behind this okay so i've always loved marketing and mm. i've loved technology yeah. right so i mean i specialize in marketing in university yeah um but then when i moved from australia to bahrain mm -hmm. i really wanted to work in a marketing agency right um in australia I had a online commerce website so okay. that's where I started learning how like website development online advertising etc because it was mm. for my own business right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so then when I came here and I'm like and I'm applying for marketing jobs and they're like well they're saying you don't have any marketing experience you know like as a job mm -hmm, right so mm -hmm. I was like so no one would give me a job in marketing at the time mm -hmm. and so I started my own website it was a blog <laughs> right it mm -hmm. was called mm -hmm. hussein hussein.com mm -hmm. i called it a job hunt social experiment mm -hmm. right so i was like if no one's going to give me a job uh, in marketing okay. i would do i would create like fake ads for betelco or fake ads for viva whatever oh, i'm showcasing oh. my my work and my building journey building profile yeah building a profile in those days no one had a website right if yeah. a website was just a domain name for a business card no yes. one believed in the value of online still. anything it's still well i mean it's changed a lot <laughs> yeah. right so Better we're talking about 12 years ago oh. at least right and anyway so i was like that's it i'm not going to apply for any more jobs i'm going to wait for the job to come to me right i read the book Think thinking grow rich mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't know if you've read that book it's must read for it's anybody it's must read right and, and there's something interesting he said in that book and it was like instead of applying for any job you apply for something very specific that you want to do then go print your resume put it in a nice leather binder etc and go take it directly to that person i was like that's all well and good but that was like in the 19 what 20s or whatever it was you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i was like in today's world mm -hmm. the equivalent of the binder and the paper and everything is my website mm -hmm. right so that's why i went with the you know i was like someone will come to me and yeah. you know what they did so i got offered a marketing director job in a big agency in bahrain right mm -hmm. i don't want to mention their names and they offered me like a really good package it was oh, almost sure. like 3000 dinars uh, a month mm -hmm. right for me that was a lot like for con compared to my salary at the time yeah and i turned it down because because of the website people were coming to me that saying can you make me a website the wow. next guy comes saying can you make me a website mm -hmm. and so i'm charging like how much do you charge for a website i don't know in those days right so i was like is uh, 500 okay yeah yeah 500 good 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 okay my salary was 700 so like 500 for me was amazing and then like you know next guy comes along i'm like 1000 yeah 1000 fine cool cool next one 2000 2000 cool Then I was like, you know what? It's actually costing me money to go to work because from nine to five I'm making seven hundred dinars, whereas from five to twelve at night, you know, in a coffee shop, I'm making triple that amount. So that's why I was like, you know what? I'm not going to take this job because I know myself. I'll end up quitting that job anyway to start a business anyway because mm -hmm. I have that itch always. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that's how my digital agency was born, which was called H2M at your, that time. Your so, first change into business. Well, I've always had 
little business ventures, you know, like in Australia, in London, etc. Mm-hmm. And I could never stick to a job because I just get bored, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want, I, I want to have my own business. So I end up quitting a job, starting something. Some, some failed, some did okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But this is really what brought me into the digital marketing uh, atmosphere because yeah. when we first started H2M. Actually, it wasn't even to start a, an agency. Mm. Um, we, it was me and an Australian partner called Matthew, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. we wanted to make the first food ordering web portal in the Middle East at the time. Okay. Talabad did not exist then, oh. right? But we're both coming from, from Australian backgrounds. We're like, how come we can't order food online here, right? Oh. And so we're like, let's make our own version. And as we're doing this, people are like, are you mad? Are you stupid? Who's going to order food from a website? This was the market sentiment at that time. Mm-hmm. So you've got to imagine like the, the days I'm talking about, yeah. you know, people like, why would anyone order anything from a website? Yes. Like that's the mentality I was dealing with, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then, because he was funding the project, right? Yeah. And it was a really interesting story about Matthew. Um, and that's why the company is called H2M because mm-hmm. I'm called, people call me H2, like Hussein Square. Hussein Square. Hussein, right? Yeah. And M for Matthew. Mm. Right? So it was H2M. Formula. Right? What was really interesting about him? He's an atheist. Okay? (laughs) Okay. Interesting. And atheists tend to be so humanitarian more than religious people sometimes. Right? And so he told me, he's like, he's saying, look, I'll invest in this business on one condition. I said, what's that? He said, a fifth. 20% 20% of all the profits go to any charity of your choosing. You want to give it to an Islamic charity. You want to give it to any type of charity. I don't care. But we have to do something good with any profit that we make. And I was like, and that's an atheist speaking. Wow. Right? So like, you know, like we have the thing called, we call it khums, right? Which is like mm. this 20% mm. tax. Mm. And here's an atheist telling me about khums. Without knowing he's talking about him. So I was like, that is so interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, so far, uh, it was like you had a background of branding, but uh, just to get uh, the yeah. idea of, uh, you know, the fun you make recently uh, on Instagram for branding people. Yes. Like, w- you, do you think every branding people is... Okay, I was, I was clearly <laughs> making a joke, okay? okay. But yeah. having said that, yes. okay... It is an inside joke in the industry as well, okay? So when someone's like, how much do you charge for, how much would something cost? You go to a marketing agency, like, how much would this cost? And if you ask any agency owner, they'll be like, well, how long is a piece of string? Mm. You know, it all depends. You know what I mean? What you're looking for, et cetera, et cetera. So they try to justify it in whichever way possible. Yes. But the inside joke that we make is like, uh, what watch is he wearing? Okay. You know, what car is he driving? Yes. How much can I charge him and get away with it, basically? Exactly. Is the price that I'm going to give as the maximum price? Mm. You know, because there's no set price. Yeah. But at the end of the day, whilst that is a joke. It is a part, it part does of happen. industry also. It does happen. Because uh, imagine, uh, let's say Apple industry also, like yeah. even Steve Jobs. Yeah. He paid huge lump sum amount for one of the logos which he tried in the beginning. Yeah. And he just listened to that guy, whatever he says. Yeah. And it was worst logo, maybe, I think I have seen. <laughs> but you, you, and here also, if you, you know, um, not checking out the standards also, yeah. when you're doing that, you are going to lose that business also. The big thing is, it's okay to charge a high amount. Obviously, yeah. like, and I would say, like, there should be some science behind it. There should yeah. be some reasoning behind it, right? Yeah. There's a reason why you go to a certain agency who's well-established, maybe mm-hmm. has offices around the world, yeah. got the best talent, etc., yeah. and they put so much thought into it, Effort right, into it. to create your brand for you. Exactly. And then you've got a lot of these new guys coming into the market, right, like yes. who don't have the experience but thinking, how much can I charge? You know what I mean? Mm. Now, I'm like, here it's like... Mm. You kind of get what you pay for sometimes, but you got to be careful as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the same two people can give you the same product and one can charge you some crazy amount while someone else is charging you a lesser amount. But in my experience, normally, okay, I mean, obviously, I don't want to talk bad about anyone, but be careful when you get a new brand or logo mm-hmm. and then you go on a stock website and you see your icon already there. Yeah. Do you know, like so when it comes to that creativity, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, oh, there's that 30, there's my logo for $30. You know what I mean? Yes. Why did I pay 3000 for this? Or if you're paying for a website and then like 
you Sim see copy. your website template on like Theme Forest or something, right? <laughs> and you're like, did I just pay 3,000 dinars for this dude to download the template and just change the words? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, like, yeah, these yeah. are the things. I, that, I have the background of branding yeah. and design, so I can understand how it feels like. Yeah. So, but at the same time, it's like, okay, you have to put some value and give, like you say, I, mean, I have seen some posts. Yeah. It's not about price, it's about values. It's all about value. And, and, and you know, the thing is, like, I got to say, with websites today, there's nothing wrong at mm. all with going the template direction, mm. right? Mm. In mm. fact, I recommend it. You know, it's like, why sit there, reinvent the wheel sometimes? When you have it. When you have ready-made um, packages for you. Yeah. Because the thing is, it's not about the template or the design. It's really about the words and the persuasion behind it. Mm. That is what you're paying for when mm. you go to a marketing mm. agency. Mm. Not, does it look pretty or not? Yeah. Right? You're, does it sell? Does it convert? Mm. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Right? could be the prettiest thing in the world, but have zero persuasion behind it. Yeah. So in today's world, copy is everything. Sales copy. You the, mean. the copy, the content, mm. the videos, the messaging, basically. Everyone is so worried about how good does this look? Does, is it on brand? Is it professional? Who cares? When I say who cares, like sometimes just doing it and explaining the core message is way more powerful than to sit there and like, you know, create some sort of TV ad, right? Yeah. So like when it comes to like, for example, um, your social media, mm. right? Mm. There, there's a reason why I hate doing social media management now and like I stay away from it. You know what I mean? It's because I have a vision, you know, and my client has a different vision. Right. They're so worried about... Uh, is, it, is the logo three centimeters from the right or not? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm more worried about... Is this, is this video going to convert? Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and, and it, yeah, it doesn't have to look great, mm -hmm. but it has to drive the point home. Yeah. Right? So when I'm doing stuff for my own account, yeah. do you see anything professional in my account? No. As in, sure, it can be professionally produced, yeah. but I am literally saying what I'm thinking. Yes. Right? And I think that's more important than and being consistent, right? And persuading through my words mm. rather than worrying about the production value of what I'm doing right now. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think like, for example, this is so important that in today's world of like how TikTok is now taking over, right? Now right. it's almost becoming the number one platform. Instagram's trying to copy all the features of TikTok. Yeah. So we have such a short attention span as human beings now, because mm. we're just used to like scroll button, next, 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 mm, next, mm, next, mm, next, next. Mm, 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 How do you stop someone dead on their track and grab their attention, right? right? It, clearly, it's the first three seconds is everything, because that's right. all you have. Yeah. You have three seconds to sell yes. your message, yeah. to sell your story, mm. right? Otherwise, people just scrolling past you. Mm. So if you're so worried about, no, the dish needs to look this way on the table, no, do you know what people really care about? the chef or the owner behind the dish and what made him think of actually creating this dish in the first place. Yeah. Humanizing stories, right. right? Is so much more important than the product itself mm. behind, you know? So it's all about the story behind the brand yeah. and the people behind it, mm. the frontline staff, you know what I mean? Your team that works for you. These are your heroes that you should be highlighting because you are connecting to other people on a human level on a social level, hence why we call it social media yeah. and not billboard advertising, mm. right? Right. And, and so that is a trick that I think a lot of people miss. And if you notice that, for example, the most successful brands online, even when it comes to food, is always the, when there's a person behind it. If, even if you're talking about Salt Bay, it was all about Salt Bay, you know, doing this thing, yeah. and right? Yeah. It wasn't about his steak. Exactly. No one cares about the steak. Right? Mm. They, they care about what yes. made him go no. viral was him. Yes. Right? And so, like, any restaurant you see today, like, around the world, if you see on your TikTok, the ones that really go viral and pop off is the one where the owner is in the, in the video doing something, mm. Uh, mm. doing something interesting, and people are connecting to him, and that's why they want to go try it. Right. Not because of the sandwich itself. Well, situation kind of like, you know, it's a... Uh, it can be used as a tool to, you know, destroy things also. Absolutely. 
and also build also right 100%. so what what's your perspective on uh, ethics of uh, persuasion ethics of persuasion is really interesting right when it comes to sales and marketing obviously you're talking about persuasion right but i think sales and marketing in general is not limited to business right mm. we're always selling ourselves every day right like whether you're selling yourself to a job whether you're selling yourself to a potential spouse mm. or to your friends you know yeah. what i mean you're always trying to persuade and you know have that sort of influence around you yeah. right ethical persuasion comes down to simply your own ethics right mm-hmm. if you are in the business of selling a product or service that you know is bad right or that you know is harmful or mm. you know your deep down the product or service doesn't even work you know mm. what i mean so mm. you're kind of just ripping someone off mm. right mm. so 100% we have to disagree with that yeah. right mm. so i think being ethical should be first yeah. regardless of sales or marketing you as a human should be ethical yes. right and then there's nothing wrong with persuasion after that and what and what do i mean because you as a sales or marketing consultant or in your in your job your mm. business your mm. business mm. without sales and marketing it has no oxygen right it doesn't even survive Right. Don't care how good your product is or how good your service is. If you cannot convince or show the value of your product or service, then no one's going to buy it, right? True. They're going to be like it's too expensive when you don't when the value is less than the price, right? I don't see the need for it if you don't know how to explain it or persuade, yeah. right? Yeah. So you have to be in the business of persuasion. Mm. When you're talking about ethics, I think we both know that if you're dealing with a company who has a product or service that you you feel like okay they're ripping people off mm. right for mm. whatever reason that is mm. right then of course i'm against that and like you know i think we also do see for example a lot of gurus out there let's call them right yeah. selling crazy amount courses mm. right whether it's a $10,000 course or whatever mm. it is mm. and then and then you're thinking to yourself is it worth the $10,000 or is he unethically persuading people to buy this $10,000. Mm. I can say honestly, well, on one hand, no one put a gun to the head of the guy buying the product. Yes. Right? <laughs> it was his decision and choice to buy it. Yeah. But when he does buy it, is the product itself good? Mm. Does it justify mm. does the ends mm. justify the means? Mm. Mm. Is it worth the $10,000? Mm. Mm. I guess it could be, right? And in, in a lot of cases, it could just be a lot of basic stuff that you could have googled. Yeah. Right? And saved yourself $10,000. But here's the interesting thing about ethical persuasion when it comes to that because mm. you know we read a, and hear about a lot of these cases yeah. where they use persuade like pressure tactics. Mm. Oh, you don't have 10,000? Put it on your credit card. Go get a loan. Is this your last $1,000 then invest it in yourself, whatever, where you're trying to take money that this guy can't even afford. Yes. To buy some product or service that you're offering and you don't even care. Don't even as mean. him as a human that this is his last penny, right? Yeah. That to me is unethical, right? It's something I can't do personally. And one thing with me is I could never sell a product or service I don't believe in. Mm. I don't care how good the technique. It's my job to be able to come up with. I don't know if I could say that, right? <laughs> But like you know, mm. as a marketer, it's my job to take your product and give show it in the best light, yeah. right? But even I turn down clients that I'm like I don't believe in the product or service, mm. right? So I don't think I can help you or I don't want to help you. Have you have you turned down any biggest I've business? Down, I've turned down stuff, yeah. Mm. Like okay, so for example, even from a, I mean it's not really ethics, but I mean in our religion it is. Mm. If if they're selling drinks or alcohol, yeah, I'll turn it down. Right, right. Clear. I'm like I cannot market your the alcohol side of your business. but then i can't market the non alcohol side without combining the two because let's say it's a lounge or restaurant it's a full experience mm, right mm. or it's a hotel or something like that right so this is nothing to do with whether i'm religious or not right but there is a fundamental level of faith that yeah. we have that yeah. i'm like this is unethical for me mm. and you're better off finding someone, someone else. else to do that for you yeah You know so yes I do have those those restrictions mm-hmm. and then I also have my own co- code of conduct and ethics meaning if you okay you might be the client 
and you might have money to mm. spend. Mm. But I personally think you do not have a good product or service. Mm. Mm. I just don't think it's good, mm. right? And if I don't think it's good, I know I, can, I probably won't sell much of it. Yeah. So I do turn it down. Even if you're going to pay me the fee to do my job, mm. I'm like, I'd rather not do the job than have you uh, crying and complaining later that you know, yeah. the results were not there. And I would have felt bad that I've taken X amount from you but not been able to deliver Y to mm. you. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So exactly. if I don't believe in the product or service, I don't touch it. Very nice. And, so and, and I think you know, that's if you, and coming back to your question, if you are selling a product or service that you don't believe in, mm -hmm. you are being very unethical there. Yeah. You don't feel like working for that. Yeah. You don't feel like working for it. And I'm yeah. saying even if they're paying you yeah. whatever, like a great amount, hmm. you're selling something you don't believe in. Yeah. So therefore, you are being unethical in trying to sell it because you don't believe it anyway. Yes. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to convince you to take something that I don't believe in. <laughs> that makes me unethical, right? For sure. Yeah. So that's unethical persuasion. Yes. And so I stay away from that. Even when it comes to energy level also, like I see you very, very much energetic, which is I have to acknowledge, mashallah. Thank you. So even, even staying very passionate about what you work, you love your work. So is that a reason that you choose your area very carefully? 100%. And make sure that you're making it, you know, you love that. Yani, when you 100%. Don't... Look, <coughs> if, for example, even when it comes to a podcast, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Forget business, even the podcast. If I don't feel the energy or yeah. the passion, yeah. I'd rather just not turn up. Mm. You know, like mm. I don't like to force myself yeah. into doing something I don't want to do. Okay. So... I'm now 39 years old, mm. turning 40, right? Mm. Mm. I made a conscious decision even this year. And I was like, I'm going to be unapologetically myself, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know, like, this might come across, for example, with my content online, right? Mm. I am not, there's no mask anymore, right? I'm not filtering myself to mm. be what you expect me to be. Mm. I am going to be completely myself. Mm. And because if I'm not yeah. enjoying yeah. every single day of my life, since I only, I say I'm 39 turning 40, I probably have a good, let's say 10 years of high production left, mm. right? Mm. I'm not going to waste that time doing things I hate. Yes. You know what I mean? And therefore I'm just going to be unhappy. And then I'm like, okay, then we die. And then what? What's the point? Yeah. What was the point? <laughs> At least whilst we're living, let's yes. live. Right? Be authentic. With be authentic. You be yourself. Live. And where does energy come from? Energy comes from when you have some sort of passion or you love what yeah. you do, yeah. right? Because you could take someone, even if you're physically an energetic person, make mm. him do something he hates and mm. just watch him slowly die away every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the conviction's not there, you know? Like, and so, yes, 100%, it comes from doing what I love. Mm. And, like, and then there's little hacks, right? So... We don't naturally wake up with energy every day, mm. right? So what is, what is your motivation for? So, so, so for me, like I was like very overweight three months ago, mm -hmm. right? And it's been a, con this is a constant thing in my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a roller coaster. You know, six months up, six months down. Six months good. up, six months down. It's normal. That's normal. But what I realized that forget your weight, forget how you look, right? This is not the reason. By exercising every day, productivity, your brain, right? When you feed yeah, yeah. the brain, the body and the brain are connected. Yes. Right? So I make sure I move my body every day. Mm. Okay, looking good is a great benefit. It's a, like a bonus. Yeah. Right? But the real reason is my brain gets active and I feel energetic yes. throughout the day. So if I didn't work out today, I would not be able to sit here and be energetic with you. Yes. You know what I mean? And that exactly. is one of my, the music I listen to, the mood I put myself in, mm. you know, whilst I work, I don't like to work out with people, mm. right? Because this is my time. Mm. It's me, my mind, mm -hmm. and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's literally phones off, no disruptions, mm -hmm. music only, mm -hmm. or motivational talks, or whatever it is that pumps me up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's my time. Okay. And that's my fuel, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that's how I stay uh, energetic. But That's my you know, sometimes uh, this motivation can drop down also. Yeah. But there must be some reason that you're doing all this. Is it something which is behind 
uh, you uh, family or or something to add to the community or what is the main reason what is the main purpose you have you know so that it makes you you know more disciplined not just motivated yeah. you know you know there's something interesting that is a recent thing i mean i've always loved marketing for one reason mm. right it's about helping other people more than helping myself. Mm -hmm. So my job is to help your business. If I help yeah. your business, it's helping your life. Your, yeah. You can pay your staff. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's a bigger than just me. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, recently, like, you know, I mean, we always, I always get young guys coming along. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Hussein, you know, I'm really hungry. I, wanna, I, I have the drive. I have the energy to do something. I just don't know what to do. Mm. Right? Mm. I want to start a business. I want to do something. I just don't know where to start, what to do, how to go about it, et cetera, et cetera. Right? I, I get these all the time, these messages. And normally, I would actually, like, if someone sends me a message, I will take the time. I will reply to them. Sure. I will give them my number. I will stay in touch with them. You know what I mean? Because mm. I enjoy that. I enjoy mentoring Adding someone else. To somebody, yeah. Exactly. So it's like, you know, like they say, don't give someone fish, give them a fishing rod, right? Exactly. So it's like when I look back and I was like, when I was starting out, no one really was there to tell me this is the right way, this is the wrong way, or guide me or whatever. We had to learn the hard way, right? right. But if we can then take all these years of experience and what we've learned and give back, you know, to mm. fast track someone, yeah. then why not? And so that's why we, um, I mean, I can announce it's here that we are running an event in like, maybe in like the 29th of this month, mm -hmm. probably, mm -hmm. right? Which is a sales and more motivation type event. Mm -hmm. So there's not some guru $10,000 event, right? <laughs> this is legit for... This month. This month, right? Okay. This is legit because, like I said, instead of sitting one by one, texting, whatever, which is not so effective, mm -hmm. I said, let me put them all into one room, Yeah. right? And let's give them a full energize them, wake them up, give them the tools they need, or at least pump them up, you know mm -hmm, what I mean, mm -hmm. to go out there and to sort of take those steps in terms of like, you mm -hmm. know, changing their lives. I want to take these 23-year-olds, instead of saying, dude, instead of like wanting a 500 dinar salary, mm -hmm. why don't you go and make 50,000 dinars a year? Make 100,000 dinars a year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You need business ideas? Well, here's some business ideas. You need to consult on those ideas? Well, then... <laughs> we have a team that you can consult with us on, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I am secretly looking for potential hungry individuals mm. to run new businesses that we are setting up as partners. Mm -hmm. So here's a platform, here's the office, here's everything you need, but are you hungry now to just go and get it done, mm -hmm, right? Because mm -hmm. obviously we can't do everything by ourselves. Right. So, but, but I figured that this is a great way to have, um, you know, give people an opportunity mm. to change their lives completely from that young age. Mm. And the reason I, I talk about the young age is because I feel like it's really hard to change people when they're older. Yeah. Habits are hard to change later. Yes. But when you're taking like a fresh grad yeah. who hasn't been destroyed by move. the corporate world, right? Who, you know the guys, like when everyone, when they start young, they have so much ambition, yeah. right? And then the world just crushes that ambition Shattered for them. Shattered them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we are one of those people also. <laughs> what to say now? So, that's we it. know the pain. You, yeah. you know the pain. And yeah. that's why you talk about motivation because you need to self-motivate. Yes. How do I, okay, with this big bad world that's out there, yeah. how do I still put a smile on my face and wake up in the morning and go out there and get it done, Five right? situations, yeah. Yeah, and Maybe. you know what? What's really interesting is that I have times where I'm like, man, I'm just bad day today, you know, just not in the mood. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even if I tell myself a thousand positive affirmations. Yes, it won't work. Well, day's great, whatever's great, whatever's great, right? So yeah, I find myself constantly, okay, saying you're not motivated right now. Step back. Yes. Don't go out there, right? Just chill out for a little bit. Yes. Reflect on it. Figure out if, if the music's not working for you, if mm -hmm. the gym's not working for you, Go find something else that'll work for you. Yes. You know what I mean? Because mm. you know what it is? I think I figured it all out. Mm. It's all directly connected to the dopamine hits that we get on a daily basis. Yeah. 
So if we are not getting our dopamine for today, mm. we feel demotivated. Mm. You know, like, it's as simple as if you look at, for example, with social media, they talk about dopamine a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The likes you get, the shares you get. Yes. If you get so X amount of likes, you're going to feel, you know, you, you get that dopamine, dopamine rush, yes. right? So you feel good, mm. right? Mm. And now if you, for example, convert this to sales, let's say, mm. you just close the sales deal right now. How much dopamine's coming to you? How great do you yes. feel? Yes. But the biggest mistake we make is what? After closing that deal, mm. now that you're so pumped, right? Mm. And you're so happy, mm. you go out and celebrate instead of making the next call. Yeah. Using that energy that you have right now to continue mm -hmm. and keep growing instead of pausing to celebrate and enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it's take your little wins every day. Mm, yes. Think about how can I get a little win today? Whether do I set up a new appointment with a few clients today? Mm. Do I finish whatever is in my pile that I'm working on and just get it done and out of the way? If you don't have the energy, don't go talk to people. There's tasks that you can do around you to feel like you've won that something. Mm. And if you win at something, then you're going to get that dopamine back yeah. and you're going to feel that energy again, which will then let you go there. But you have to consciously be aware of this. Yeah. Don't say, oh, I'm feeling shh bad today, I'm depressed or whatever. You know what I mean? That's not real. Yes. That's you selling yourself that it's a bad day today. Yeah. So we are still even selling ourselves when it comes to our mood as well. That was something related to the sales and the persuasion. And even while selling also, one of the responsibilities we have is like, you know, uh, to, you know, take the contract signing and everything. Even small to big companies now, they have this small, small letter written mm. agreement and terms, which are misleading. Yeah. You know? So what are your thoughts on those, Yanni? Like, there should be some change on these things. And you're, you're just making them read or uh, don't read, actually. You know, have the, those letters written for so many pages. No, nobody even tries to go for it, Yanni. You know, I think like... If you look at banking, for example, mm. with any product that you take, no one's ever written, written, read the terms and conditions, yes. right? You just look at the price, the percentage, or whatever it is. You sign, oh, I get approved, great, done, move on, right? It's become a habit now. It's a habit. If you look at software, yes. every software that you use, you have to accept the terms and conditions. Who's going to sit there, read 20,000, 100,000 mm -hmm. words, right, to figure yes. out whether using Microsoft Word is good for me or bad for me? But when it comes to, like, real, like, let's say, everyday business, right? We obviously put together a contract to make it, uh, contracts are important yeah. when disputes happen. Yes. You know what I mean? And yes. disputes can, can arise. Can happen, yeah. You do want to make sure the guys read it. Yes. And then do you realize when they do read it, and if they don't like it, they'll tell you, change, change it. Change this, change mm -hmm. this, change this, change this. Like, but then who's, who's the right, who's the wrong here? You know what I mean? Mm. You're telling me to change my own conditions. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can both come to an agreement there. I don't think people really value the terms of the contract. You yeah. know, what they really value is get it done, get it sold. We have a common understanding of what we're going to deliver. And that contract is only when things go wrong, right? And I think one of the things here is that, you know, if you notice, court and lawyers and legal is not really a thing in Bahrain. It exists. Just for namesake, maybe. But you're like... I might end up spending more on the lawyer than what this contract was worth in the first place by yes. the time I'm chasing him up to pay, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Very true. So sometimes, I mean, it's just better off just write off the loss, move on. Don't sit there fighting and arguing over it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many, so many brothers I have seen, they have tried fighting and they lose. Yeah. Sometimes lose. you win. Sometimes you lose, Most of the time but it's a lose. worth the investment is my question, right? Yes. I'm always like, I, I have a, because I have a different belief system. Right? Mm. I was like, if I'm going to sit here and argue with you mm. and go backwards and forwards, mm. oh no, but you, you said we should deliver this. We delivered this. Now please pay, mm. right? Mm. And this can go backwards and forwards for so long. Okay. I'm like, that to me is A, a waste of my time, mm. right? B, it's like um, limited scarcity mindset, mm. right? Mm. It means 
I am so reliant on you、hmm. and so worried about this deal because I don't really deep down believe that I can go out there、hmm. and find twenty new contracts tomorrow. True. But if I had this like mindset that there's so much fish in the sea. There's so many opportunities、mm. out there.、Mm-hmm. I would never sit here and argue with you over something small. I'd be like, you know what? Good for you. Bye bye. See you later. Done. You just lost your、uh, your your work of service. Exactly. I, and but I'm not worried because I'm like, you know what? There's a hundred other clients out there. Yeah. You know what I mean?、Yeah. But when but when you have this, and I think a lot of like obviously with small business especially, we do have this limited. Oh,、uh, you know, his his, and because these are things like in Bahrain, you'll hear things like. Oh, business is bad. The economy is bad. Oh, you know what? It's the twentieth today. Salaries <laughs> come on the twenty fifth.、Mm. That's why there's no one coming to my restaurant、mm. or my business、mm. right now. You、mm. know what I mean?、Mm. It's sal- salaries haven't dropped yet.、Mm-hmm. Saudis are not coming over for the weekend. This is why it's so bad. You know what I mean? All these excuses that we sell ourselves every day, right? And I'm like, okay. Oh, you know, Bahrainis—they don't really have a budget. They don't appreciate it, you know. So they're not paying me the price I deserve, etc., etc., etc. So many f- sob stories. I call these sob stories, right?、Mm. And I'm like, okay, if this is the case, let me ask you a question as the owner. Okay. Instead of sitting here and crying about how bad the market is, right? First of all, is your Are your competitors still alive and growing?、Mm. Mm-hmm. If the answer is yes, then obviously you can't say it's the market, right? Yes, because they're selling a similar product and service. They're not. They're not complaining and crying about it, right? That's the first of all. Second of all, what have you done directly to change the situation?、Mm. You don't need more marketing. Yeah. You don't need to do a discount. You don't need to give an offer. My first question is. How many phone calls have you made today to potential new prospects to set up just a meeting to have a coffee and have a chat with them? If your answer isn't, "Well, I spent all day for the last five days doing this,、mm. and no one's interested,"、mm. and by the way, never has that been the answer. Yes. Okay, and never will it be the answer because if you actually did that, you'll see like your world just changes immediately.、Mm. What the faster you realize. That your world and your future is in your hands, okay? The quicker you can expand, grow, and do well.、Mm. But why is this always happens? Because I mean, I don't want to use the wrong word here. We are scared of rejection、mm. as human beings, right? We have the fear of rejection in our heart. And that's probably why only a few people you would consider to be players or womanizers, right? Because、mm-hmm. they, they don't have the fear of rejection.、Mm. They'll just go and talk to any random、yes. person, right?、Yes. Whereas the majority of people wait for the girl to come to them, or there's an introduction, or there's、mm. some event, or whatever it is, right? But it's the same thing in in sales and marketing, right?、Mm. The reason you don't say, okay, if I say, Kazi, here's a hundred companies you can call tomorrow. Yeah. I bet you're not going to go through twenty, right?、Mm. And, and because as soon as you get a few rejections, your pride gets hurt,、mm. your ego gets hurt. Like, oh, maybe I'm not good at this. Or、oh, maybe this is a bad business I'm in.、Mm-hmm. You know what I mean?、Mm. All these random thoughts come into your mind, and then you start selling yourself every reason, every excuse to not do this,、yeah. right? Because you see how someone's、um, attitude also changes with every rejection. Yes. Right. So like you start out really pumped, right?、Mm. Hey Hussein, la 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 la. Oh, not interested. Next one. Hey Hussein, la, la, la. <laughs> next one. You're not interested, are you?、Mm. But this is what I have. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like you yourself. Okay, start doing some horrible pitches. Yes. Right. With every rejection that you get, because your your morale is gone out the window,、mm. right?、Mm-hmm. So so, I would say, instead of, and this is a very interesting point that the reason I bring this up. Mm-hmm. Instead of going out and hiring a marketing company,、mm-hmm. right, or instead of paying to hire a marketing guy or girl in your company, why don't you actually find real proactive sales pros and invest your money there? If you're not willing to do it yourself because no one likes doing it, right? 
why don't you spend all your money mm-hmm. on commission, paying commissions and incentives to a well-trained sales team instead of spending on ads and marketing, et cetera, et cetera. Because the whole thing is that marketing and sales should work hand in hand. Mm-hmm. The reason you're doing marketing is to raise the awareness of your business, right? And it's to sell, you know, solve that problem publicly. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as that potential prospect wants to deal with you or like, you know, do business with you, the marketing is helping the sales team. So the sales team is not calling randomly out of the blue. Yeah. Or they're like, who's this guy? Mm. You know what I mean? Right. So my job but from a marketing point of view is I need everyone to know Hustle Kitchen. I need everyone to know Hussein. So then if I have a sales team who call up, they're like, hey, I'm calling on behalf of Hustle Kitchen. Oh, yes, I've heard of that. Mm. So my job is to make his job easier. Right. But without that guy, without the sales team, whether it's yourself or a team, you'll never close. And then you'll always say, the market is bad. Everything yeah. is bad. You know what I mean? Yes. How sales for some reason is the least appreciated. Yes. I'm talking about Bahrain here, right? I'm not talking about in Australia or in the UK. Yes. There's a reason why if you lived in Australia and you were a great salesperson, you're probably making three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year from the age of 21. Wow. Right? Because if you're bringing in the money, then you should be making the money. Mm. Right? Whereas if you look, if you look at like banking as an example, what the hell is an investment banker? Mm. It's an elaborate salesperson in a suit, right? Mm. Who says, I'm a banker. Mm. He's not the analyst. He's not <laughs> telling you whether you should buy, sell, whatever. He's got products that he has to sell for the bank. Right. And he says, I'm an investment banker. Mm. Now that sounds prestigious, mm. right? Right. Whereas any other role, because you're not calling him an investment banker, is like if he says, I'm a salesman, mm. first of all, it sounds cheap. Yes. People think it's something cheap. Already. Second of all, people are like, well, why would I pay a sales guy 2,000 dinars a month? Uh, 300 dinars, anyone can go make some phone calls, mm. go meet some people, mm-hmm. blah, 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 mm-hmm. right? Mm. Uh, what are you thinking? On what planet are you paying the least for the person you should be paying the most? Right. Because you bring me any other skilled job, right? So you work in the medical tech field, yes. right? Let's say you had a doctor working here, right? Who's picking the products, you know, like he has all the details and everything. Cool. Should the doctor be paid more or the sales guy? Mm. Because it doesn't matter how many products you have here. Yes. But if no one can sell them, mm. then there is no business anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So it's the opposite. The sales guy is the most... I, for for one, respect the salespeople the most in every company, right? Because I say without them, the company does not exist, does not survive, does not thrive. Unless you're talking about, okay, you're one of these big old families in Bahrain who have connections and wasters and networks and whatever. But still, they need the team. But let's say, you know, there are some people like that, but the majority of us don't have any network and connections and whatever. Mm. We've got to go out there and make it happen, Mm. right? So... That is the number one investment I'd be making is, you know what? I'm not going to spend 500 dinars on Facebook ads this month. Hmm. I'm going to pay some guy 500 dinars to start making some calls for me. Yeah. Right? Because those ads might or might not convert, but this guy will give me direct feedback, mm. whether it's, mm. like, mm. he's closing or is not. Exactly. Right? And sure, it's not for everyone. And if it's not, you've got to replace him. You know what? A sales guy who asks for a salary is the biggest risk on the company. Mm. I would say give him zero salary. You know? I, I did say you should, he should be the highest paid. Okay. But it does not mean he should be the highest paid on a salary. Mm. Because if a sales guy asks you for a salary uh, because, and, and you have a competitive commission structure in place, mm. right? Mm. That's just telling you that he has zero confidence that he can sell your product. Mm. So he needs his safety zone, right? Right. But if he's so worried that he can't sell it, then why the hell would I want to hire him to be in the sales team in the first place? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, yes. so the reason people say like, okay, sales is a cheap role is mm-hmm. because yes, the salary officially might be 300 dinars or whatever, yeah. but you should, as the owner, give them a ladder or a pathway to make 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 dinars. Right. 
the share should be given to them. 100%. It's like that's why with these investment bankers, right, mm. going back to them, when they get these massive bonuses at the end of the year, mm. right, that's because how much money did you raise? How much did you sell? Mm. Did you bring mm. in as capital? Mm. Mm. You don't care if like your trades were good because you're not the trader. Right. Your job is to continuously find new investors to come and invest money there. Mm. And mm. the more money you bring in, the bigger this check you're going to get at the end of the year. Yes. That I don't think in Bahrain will happen so much easily. Yani. Now, it, it's a mindset. Yeah. Right. And, and the shift needs to happen. Mm. I remember my first job in Australia, it was literally like almost like a Wolf of Wall Street style. Right. So they're like, there was a, um, it was a event selling company. So they do training courses. Mm. Now there is no course. You sell the seats to the course then they'll go hire the professor or hire the room and whatever, whatever. Mm. So it's a chicken or egg situation. <laughs> First, you sell the seats. Mm. Then you create the course, mm. which I thought was genius, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have this like fixed costs around. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. they broke this up into two. So we're, there's 20 of us in the sales team. And there's, there were like five people, let's say, in the marketing team. And so they'd have sales versus marketing. You know, like marketing is they're sending out newsletters, whatever, whatever. And when someone signs up, you know, they put the money amount, how much, how much we've sold this week. Sales guys, obviously, on the phone, you know what I mean? Whenever they sell, ring the bell, you know what I mean? Put, put down your number. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, here's the interesting thing. Like, we had no Google. We had no computers. So they give you a desk, a phone, and the yellow pages. Mm. Do you remember the yellow pages? Mm. It's a phone book, right? Mm. Now, I just arrived in Australia, right, <laughs> from like since I was a child. Mm. And they're like, my, I was selling something, called, a course called investment, financial risk management, or customer retention, or something like that. I was like, but who do I call? Like, yeah, I've got the yellow pages. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if I need to sell this to a banker, yeah. not finding a banker's name in the yellow pages, am I? I'm going to find the branch. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, how am I going to get to this head office? Blah, 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 blah. So anyway, I hated this job in the beginning because mm. there was no training given. Mm. And I think this is one of the big things that, you know, how can you have sales teams without training them? Right. Because otherwise, yeah, like you said, it's just find anyone. Either works or it doesn't work. You know what I mean? So there was um, a guy there and I was like, dude, you studied engineering, mm. right? It's like you just graduated mm. engineering. You got your master's or something in engineering. I was like, why are you working here? Okay. And he'd be like, same. What other job as a 21 or 22-year-old, however old he was, as a 22-year-old, can I make $180,000 a year from day one? Like, that is true. That I can't take that away from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So whether so if money's the motivator, perfect place, right? Mm. And then and then when, when I'm looking at so us we're twenty people on the board, every time someone sells you write down the amount, right? Mm. How much money were the, uh, were we making as twenty people for the company per week? Mm. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Wow. That's how much on the board the sales team was. From nothing. From a phone, yellow pages, from a course that doesn't exist. Mm. So from thin air, and I literally say this is from thin air, yes, yes. you're making $350,000 a week. Wow. So is this where you should be investing in? Absolutely. Mm. We were doing more sales than the marketing team. Wow. All the marketing was quite close, so like 200000 and we're like 300, 350000 So between the two, that's $550,000 from a product that doesn't exist, from a course that doesn't exist, to an event that we don't even know where it's going to be. And so, yes, can you make something from nothing? Fastest way is through sales. Yes. And I agree, Yanni. This is how uh, the f sales used to happen before. Yeah. There was a uh, gym uh, in the beginning, you know, when I was into, you know, uh, engineering last year, while well, you do the projects, you go and try out things, right? So, in that gym space, they did not even have the equipments. All the sales guys, all the trainers were the salespeople. They are standing uh, outside the building and giving the flyers. Yeah, for free sessions. Just, not even free sessions. They're just like, come with us, we yeah. will show you the place. Yeah. They're like, this chest press will be here. Yeah. This machine will be here. Oh, this leg chair. press is just, yeah, okay. just showing the place. Yeah, that's nice. And they said the investment was taken I mean, back within one month. 
I was shocked to see like this yeah. whole team, the way they're structured, the framework, the vision they have. Wow, this is how it should be. The yeah. investor might, must be like, okay, خلاص, I'm, 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 I'm in for another branch. Yeah, this that, is they, how they work. See that, that? That's how it is. So it's beautiful when it comes to sales, you know. Yeah, and 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 when it comes to marketing, right? I and I think like this is the most important thing that mm. um, you know people need to appreciate, right? Yeah. Marketing obviously is sales as well, right? Mm-hmm. Because people do buy and consume directly from your persuasion, as you said. Yeah. Right. But it shouldn't be a transactional relationship, mm. right? Because not everyone is in the market for the product that you're selling today. Mm. So you should be building relationships. Yes. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be like, ah. Mm. Uh, Maybe the price is too much. Mm. It's not about the price is too much. Yeah, maybe this. He's just not ready to buy right now. You know, like if it's a gym, as an example, if it was a gym, mm. be like, well, maybe the guy doesn't want to train him yet. Yes. Right. He hasn't made the active choice of which gym to go to yet. He's just yes. thinking about it though. Maybe he will take time. But because he's thinking about it, this is the, the beautiful example here, right? So instead of being like twenty dinars a month, let's go. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, personal training sessions, twenty, uh, fifty dollars, whatever it is, right? That's transactional, right? Instead, use your marketing, use your social media, which is free for you, to constantly being like, ah, oh, his five, his new a new way to try to do sit ups to get a six pack. Here's mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. diet mm-hmm. tips. Here's some mm-hmm. exercise tips. You know what I mean? And now I'm not buying because I'm not in the market to buy right now, but I am engaged. Yes. Right, and I'm watching, and I'm learning, and I'm being educated, mm. and and when, and it's important to have edutainment, yes. right? So it shouldn't be so boring. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, not not to knock against the fitness guys, but mm. if you see fitness accounts mm. in Bahrain, mm. they're really boring. Okay, it's, it's like it's more about him showing his muscles mm. of him lifting, mm. but never really like a, giving some value. Never va- the value is not there. Yes. It's He's thinking of himself first. Yes. He's being selfish, right? He's like, look at me. Look mm. how good I look. Mm. Not let me how how I can help you. How I can help you. Mm. Here's things you can try, etc., mm. etc. Et so now, if you if you were doing that approach and being like, I'm going to edutain people. So I'm building fans already who now trust me and and transact with me, right? Mm. Who ask me questions. They see me as the expert in my area and my field. So when he is ready to get a personal trainer or sign up to a gym or whatever it is, the first person is going to come to is you. Yes. So you shouldn't be it shouldn't be sell 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 sell. It should be inform 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 till he gets to the point. Yes. Every now and again, run your offers, etc. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. That might be a trigger point for someone mm-hmm. who's in the market mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. right? But you shouldn't be f- worried about the five percent because it's five percent of people want to buy from you right now, mm-hmm. right? But they're going to buy anyway. Yeah. Right. So your focus shouldn't be on these five percent. Hmm. These five percent, you got your offers going, you got whatever going. You know what I mean? But you should be thinking, how can I get this ninety-five percent? Yes. This is my long-term sustainability, mm-hmm. and this is my bread and butter and my growth. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. How can that's I? That's what you call in the lead generation stuff. Or oh, that's where your lead generation comes in. But I'm but I'm saying like, okay, very te- on a technical level, you got lead generation funnels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I'm saying from a non-lead generation, non-technical perspective, normally yeah. every piece of content you put out there, you should think to yourself: Is this giving value to you, or is it giving value to me? Mm. Is this my ego, or is this valuable for you? True. If it's not valuable for you, then maybe I should not consider putting it out there. Mm. If it's just for my ego, and if you think like that. If you think like your job is to help people, right? And again, like you know, even with sales, you know, we say your job isn't to sell someone. Your job is you are a consultant trying to help them solve a problem, mm. right? Mm. And the reason your phone call is so important because you could have solved a massive problem in his life today. And if you're thinking like that, that my job, like a doctor, is to go analyze his problem and find provide a solution, mm. right? Now I'm not thinking I'm a sleazy sales guy. You know, doing some underhanded techniques. Right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. literally: Can I solve your problem? Mm. If yes, I have the right solution for you. If not, it's a problem that I can't solve. Move on. Move on. Don't force it. You know what I mean? Because then you're not adding that value. 
Mm. You know what I mean? So, but, and I'm saying, again, with posting online, for example, I don't think I have once posted uh, Work With Hustle Kitchen. Mm. Have you ever seen me no. sell any product or service of anything that's related to my field? It's all available on website, but it's... If they go to the website, they can go to the website. They can go mm. check, yes, on the website, sure. You know, that's the whole point of a website, yeah. right? So, Is, you, so someone who's interested... But you are just creating the bridge there. Yeah. So if someone wa- wants to transact, they can go to the website. And obviously, I've written everything to be very persuasive on the website, mm. right? But with me personally, I'm never like, yo, we do marketing... You know, call me today. We're going to sort out your social media. We're going to sort out this for you. We're going to do that for you. I'm never selling anything mm. through my social that a lot of people like to say, what do you actually do? Because if they haven't gone on my website, mm. my own friends, imagine, right? <laughs> if they haven't gone on my website, right? Mm. They're like, what do you actually do, bro? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm a marketing consultant, as you can see <laughs> on my website, <laughs> because all the content they see it's got nothing to do with, uh, you know, like trying to sell them on any product or service. It's building relationships. I'm building relationships, right? I'm, I'm, I'm building communities, relationships. I'm, I'm edutaining, Connecting. you know what I mean? Mm. I'm for free giving stuff out. I'm making fun of my own industry, yes. right? But I'm entertaining you. Are you, you know, I'm trying <laughs> to entertain you here, right? right. But that's because I will, st- I will stay top in mind for you. Right. So if you were looking at something related to my field, mm. then you might give me a call and be like, hey, man, like, what can you help? It's, me it's with natural that? that you will come in their mind. That's it. it happened many times to me also. They're like all of a sudden they're calling me and they're like, I just want to, you know, uh, start a campaign for this work. And you came in my mind. That's it. I said. Thank God, yeah. <laughs> that, but that is the goal. Yes. That is the goal. The no goal to isn't run. to be like, bye, 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 bye. Yes. Right? So if I was um, r- doing like, for example, if it was the Hustle Kitchen account and not the Hussein account, mm-hmm. it'd be the same thing. Mm. I would not be like, oh, $500 a month social media, blah, 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 right? So all these people who are like, by the way, I hate these guys, okay? I have to say this, like, for... <laughs> There's a lot of agencies out there in, in my industry, but I don't care, yeah. right? Because I don't, even, I don't see anyone as competition, right? Mm. What I mean is I think there's a market for everyone. Yes. And, and it's you and your fruits and, you know, your, your rights, you know, depending on how hard or what you work. So I'm, I'm not like if I see someone succeed, I'm happy for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. but, but I'm saying this for their own good, mm. right? So when they come out and they post, get... 30 posts a month, five videos, this, that, website, email, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah for only 100 dinars. <laughs> right? Mm. I look at that and I'm like, there's two things going on in my head. Mm. Three, actually. One is you could be a liar. Mm. You could say 100 dinars and by the time they work with you, like, oh, when I add this, 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 this together, it's 1,000. Yes. But I swear a lot of people are not lying. This is yes. actually 100 dinars, right? So mm. they're not liars. Mm. So then I'm like, okay, so you're not lying. Mm-hmm. Is it crap? Mm-hmm. Second thing going through my head. Yeah. Right? Uh, is this such horrible quality or you've mm-hmm. got such bad designers or bad whatever behind you that you can afford to do it for 100 dinars? Mm-hmm. Right? Second thought. Third is you're desperate. Yeah. You know, market is bad, blah, 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 like, as you said, right? Yes. So if you're a marketing company that's desperate enough to knock down your prices to 100 dinars, then you're not really solving the problem that you're advertising, are you? Because you're saying you're a marketing company. But if you're a marketing company, you should be able to market yourself to get enough clients <laughs> without going down 100 dinars, yes. right? Yes. And, and, and then I'm like, okay. But the, but the killer here is because I'm like, if, it, if you do get those 100 dinar clients, mm. 200 dinar clients, right? Mm. Forget the fact that they're trying to do a price war because mm. it's not a price war. It's the, the market's kind of competitive. So they're, they're like, maybe if we drop our prices... Like 200 dinars a client, get 10 clients, it's two grand, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm like, come on, man. Are you going to start servicing 100 clients, you know what I mean, just to mm-hmm. make 10 grand or whatever it is? You are in the human business. You're yes. in the service-based business. I'm not selling you a bottle of water that mm-hmm. I can sell mm-hmm. a million of them mm-hmm. at 100 fills and I'm cool. Mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. every client you onboard, you're onboarding headache. You're onboarding time. You're onboarding yes. resources. You need humans working on this. 
This is not sustainable. It's yes. not profitable. You'll never grow your business, but instead you are ruining the industry's name and pricing when it comes to the real companies who are actually trying to do Because, you know, you get a client be like, okay, it's $1,000 a month for social media. Mm. Gonna, but that guy's doing it for $100. Okay, go ahead. Like, well, go ahead with them. You know what I mean? What, what else you can do, Yanni? But, but, I, but, my, but that's not my problem. My problem is for that guy who is doing it for $100. How can you ever sustain your business mm. at that price? You know yes. what I mean? Even if he is doing it. Even if he's doing it. This is my point. Yeah. The source of uh, uh, sales pitch or sales things or sales content itself comes from behavior of human, human motives. Yeah. Whether it is their, you know, uh, if they're afraid of their security, afraid of their health, afraid of their, you know, losing relationships. You know, they're, most of them are afraid of something. You know, so using that as you know motive, sales yeah. pitch are made. Yeah. You know what? What are your thoughts on those? And you describe your uh, your experiences on that. Are you using such similar content, or you try to avoid those things? And that's an interesting point. Um, oh. I tend to. I mean, I don't scare them into death, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, but but having. But it goes back to says scarcity but mindset. But having you know? said that, it's true because. See, it's all about psychology at the mm, end of the day, mm, right? Mm, mm. So if you master psychology, yeah. right, that is the best point to start, right? As, so if you're doing not just the sales, the market, let's call this an, the, the ecosystem, right? Yes, in the marketing, you've got to be thinking, what is it that keeps Kazi up at night mm. when, he, when he's worried about the, something related to my product or service that I have? Why would you want it? What keeps you up at night? Mm. You know, stressed and nervous and thinking about it. And then how can I use those keywords, right, to make him think about that, mm. the deeper psychology of it, right, in order to be more persuasive and sell the product or service. So if I was selling marketing mm. as a service, which was what we do, I don't want to be talking to you about marketing, mm. right? I want to be more like, how, what happens if, you know, like, how can you grow your income mm. within the next three months? Mm. What happens if you don't, mm. right? How, like, the psychology behind why you would need me is not because of what I'm actually providing. Mm. The, because the problem that you're trying to solve is how do I pay my stuff? Yeah. How do I pay my family? How it's do I put food on Already scarcity. Yeah. Scarcity. So, these are, the, these are the problems that you have. So yes, I would bring these up, right? I don't see any ethical issue with this at mm. all, right? Because I'm trying but to... But you're showing at least. Yeah, yeah. That is a way. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm saying, of course. Are you complaining that the market is bad? Mm. Like, have you been getting a hit with this? Mm. Well, let me show you it within the next six weeks how you can grow your business by 10, 20, 30, 40%. Yeah. Right? Now, that's more interesting than... We do marketing. Mm. You know what I mean? I agree. And, and so like when it comes to the actual sales call as well, yes, it's the same thing. So it's like, so from what I understand, you're trying, you know, you're struggling at the moment in your business and you want to grow it, mm. right? Mm. What steps have you taken to, already to solve this? Mm. Uh, I, uh, you know, like I, I did some Instagram posts. You know what I mean? Mm. Okay. Has that helped you? Hmm. How long have you been doing this for? How often are you post it? Hmm. Has this helped you in your business? Yeah. Uh, I'm not really getting anything. The hmm. market, la, 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 la. You know? Now, I want to go deeper, hmm. right? Hmm. I'm not trying to sell my service, right? But I'm saying, if you did have an extra 20, 30 leads every day, every month, every week or whatever, hmm. Hmm. would this help you in your business? It could. Uh, nice. Yeah, it could, right? So, so... Are you saying the problem isn't the product, but you're just not in the room with the right people mm. in order to explain your product or service? Right. Right? Now, what happens if you don't get these 20, 30 leads? If you continue doing these Instagram posts, mm, mm, mm. is that sustainable in your business? How would this affect your life and your business? Mm. Of course, I'm going to make him think about these things. Mm. Right? Mm. So by the time I come up with the solution, he's yeah. already sold himself. Yeah, yeah. It's interest created. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, my job 
isn't to tell you to take my product or service. Mm. My job is to talk to you in a way that you, to sell, so you sell yourself that you want this product or service, yes. right? That you know, when you're like, I oh, say, I want to start working with you. Why would you want to start working with me? Mm. How would this help your business if you were working with me? Interesting. You know, I'm not like trying to quickly get the yes and go. Yes. Because I need you to be convinced. Yes. No, I need you to be convinced. Because if you're not convinced, yes, I can find, find my way to get a yes. Mm. But will you really be sold on it? Tomorrow you're going to wake up with what we say, buyer's remorse. Yes. Why did I buy this? Yeah. Why did I spend this? Yes. Right? I'm building a relationship with you. So, right? so I'm not trying to have a one-night stand here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I need you to be fully sold, yes. believed, convinced that this is the right relationship for you. Yes. Right? Not just me, it's but for you as well. It's, it's a like marriage. marriage. <laughs> it's a marriage. There's a reason why in a marriage we ask a million questions before right. we decide to marry someone, right? Right. And like we have to make sure, are you sure this is the right guy? Mm. Are you sure this is the right girl? Mm. But it's the same thing in business, right? It's a marriage. Yes. So it's, yes, I could very quickly be like, come on, okay, just sign now. Let's get it done. La, 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 la. No, no. I need you. To be fully sold, Yanni. To be fully sold because I'm going to need your support as well moving forward. Because mm. it's a two-way relationship. Right. Right? So when I come up with some concepts and ideas for you, you need to be open to listening to them. Right. Right? And I need to be open to listening to you and understanding you. You know what I mean? So I'm more asking questions. Mm. Like in my job, I'm always asking questions to understand you. Mm. Not even talking about my product or service. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I had this exercise with my, like when we had the app uh, Flash, mm-hmm. Flash deals, right? We did limited time deals and offers. Mm-hmm. And so I would tell my, I had a sales team like signing up merchants and businesses. And the exercise I would do with them is I would say, I need you to sign up Merchants to Flash. Mm-hmm. Don't even mention Flash. Mm. Okay. <laughs> right? Really? Oh. Mention Flash at the end. Okay. Right? But I need your sales pitch. Mm. You should be so convinced that what we have is so good, right? That, you, that, that passion should come across mm. over the phone mm. that you don't even need to explain what the product is. Mm. Right? Mm. You need them to ask you mm. once they've sold... Okay, how are you going to help me? Okay. Oh, we have this app called Flash. Oh. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, so so when, I, when I'm first talking to you, I'd be like, hey, and, and I'm talking to strangers, right? So mm-hmm. like, I don't know, like we signed up 500 businesses in a year. I don't know these guys, who these people are when we're you know, first talking to them, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'll call someone random, be like, hi, yeah, I'm saying, bye. I want to send 500 customers to your business tomorrow. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. What do you mean, like 500 customers to my restaurant? Mm. Yeah, um, is there enough space, by the way, that if I could send 500 <laughs> people to your business tomorrow, mm. right? How, how, who do I talk to? Are you the right person to talk to to handle 500 people? <laughs> oh, no, no, you need to speak to my manager, whatever, whatever. Yeah, can you please tell him uh, Hussein called? Mm. Cool. Instead of them being like, no, send an email, blah, 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 right? Now I'm like, telling you I'm bringing 500 people to your place. Mm. So obviously I need the highest authority person here, right? right. And then they'll call me back. Immediately, the, the GM or whoever will call me back. For sure. Yeah. Oh, so you want uh, to? So I understand you want to bring five. Yes, I want to. Are you the right person to speak to? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is between two o'clock and six o'clock, right? I'm going to bring a spread of five hundred people over that time. Is mm-hmm. that okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm not charging you anything for this, by the way. So mm-hmm. it's com- completely complimentary. Cool. Then, of course, they're happy, right? Right. They don't even ask why, how, what mm-hmm. until at the end they're like, okay. So how are you going to do, the, like, who's coming, whatever? Oh, we have the number one app in Bahrain for deals and offers, mm. but I can guarantee you that we'll bring you two, three, four hundred people tomorrow. Mm, mm, mm. Cool, how do I sign up? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. I've solved the, I've brought up the problem first, mm, right? Mm. And I want to know, can you handle 500 people? Right. Is tomorrow a busy day for you? Yes. I'm going with the assumptions first, right? And I'm talking... I'm making their mind think more of the dollar signs mm. that they're going to get, mm. right? The mm. benefits they'll get mm. before I even need to mention the app. Mm. So the app is, comes all the way at the end. Mm. Whereas, whereas in the beginning where they're like, hi, I'm calling from an app called Flash. We know mm. we do these deals. I'm not interested. Mm. Mm. Send an email. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. This is the natural response, right? Yes. Someone calls you, yeah. all right, and immediately brings up Take the company email. name, the whatever, the whatever. Mm. Yeah, yeah, send an email. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to be creative. Yes. Right? Think, how do I get around this? Because I was like, because when I speak to people and they're like, send me an email, I was like, sorry, I don't, I don't send emails. Um, but am I not giving you enough information? Is this the mm. problem? Mm. Can I answer more? Do you have any more questions that I can ask? That you can mm. ask me and I can solve for you. Mm, mm, mm. But emails, the problem is, I mean, I could technically send you an email, mm. but I know most people don't read emails and it's just more headache for you. So if you have any specific questions right now, mm. ask me. I'm on the phone with you. I'm happy to answer these questions for mm, you. Mm, mm, mm. Interesting. <laughs> you know, like, so, so that, that is the approach that uh, we would have taken. Mm, and mm, yeah, mm. on the phone would have signed up 500 people. Without mm. physically meeting mm. any of these businesses. Mm. Only when the contract needs to be signed, send someone with the contract so they can just sign it. Interesting. So you have a strategy behind everything what you do. So uh, be, uh, before I go into something else, like, yeah. I just wanted to check like, uh, for youth uh, or the startups, basically. Yeah. So you are already mentoring some of them. And uh, what comes first? Is it the communication or the cash flow? This is really interesting, right? Because mm. with the startups, it's very hard for everyone's like, oh, it's hard to raise investment, hard yes. to bring the cash, whatever. whatever. How do you collaborate with them, basically? Especially you being a marketing and brand company. Yeah, I, I mean, look, the with startups, I love sharing my experiences, my stories. Mm. I listen to what they do. You mm. know, I give them advice, strategies, mm. etc. Mm. Right, mm. but. I'm, I'm the guy who's like, you can't let cash flow be the stumbling block. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. If you have a good idea, mm. well, well, my first question is, why, okay, before you go for an investment round, right? Mm. And yes, eventually you do need investment. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you need your team, et cetera, et cetera. But if you really believe in your startup, right? Are you actually that hungry for it? This comes back to the same question that we had before, mm. right? As the owner, are you making those 20, right. 30, 40 phone calls every day or not, right? right? right. So if before, like, especially with these startups, you're mainly talking about tech, right? So now obviously you could be in a different type of business where it's like a physical product. Mm -hmm. Yes, without cash, you can't physically even bring the product in. Right. And that's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say, you know, a, a lot of guys in this tech space, it's like, they okay. They still do it. Before building the app or the website, try running the concept with a Google Sheet. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, like mm. there's nothing stopping you from doing this, right? right, right. So I remember, I remember we had the startup once at Mashuri, um, the Tepkin program. Mm. And she was an amazing uh, startup, you know, amazing entrepreneur. And so her business was about connecting tutors, private tutors with students, mm -hmm. right? What I loved about her is that at the, that point, she had already done hundreds of meetings or connections. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All through just Google Forms. Wow. Without the app, mm -hmm. without the website. So she didn't wait two years to come design, develop, blah, 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 to then go to the market and realize, oh, no one's interested in my service. Right. Right? And I just wasted two years and I wasted a shitload of cash. Yes. You know what I mean? Right. So... Or, or you know that, like, you realize that you're not the type of person that will, because everyone loves, everyone loves saying they're an entrepreneur. They love the word startup, right? They love to say I'm a techpreneur or a tech whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. They love designing logos and UIs and making things pretty and mm -hmm. all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Then they love going and building the website, the app, etc. Right? Yeah. They love that. Because that requires no work. That requires them sitting back. Someone else is doing the design, the development, whatever. Mm. They just are imagining oh, that Lamborghini I'm going to get <laughs> next year once we launch. Because since the Bahrain's population is 1.5 million, what I'm selling, everyone in Bahrain can use. But if I only had 1% of that market, do you know, so we're at least selling 10,000, 20,000 people or whatever it is. <laughs> if that 20,000 only gave me one dinar each per month, I'm chilling on 20 grand a month, right? <laughs> this is a foolproof plan. Mom, dad, pack your bags. We're going to Bahamas next year, right? <laughs> and then they start. They go online. 
Yeah. No one, no, not one customer, not one sign up. Ah, uh, you know, we just need to do more Instagram ads, whatever, oh. whatever. Okay. Ah, uh, we need to go get an influencer. La la la. Let's spend some more money doing this stuff, right? Nothing, no transactions or very little transaction, right? Does that mean the idea was bad? No, mm -hmm. could have been a good idea, mm -hmm. right? But when the hustle is just about to begin, mm -hmm. this is where you should be like 24-7, like eat, breathe, you know, breathe, sleep, your, start up your business. The smallest the problem in the way, uh, maybe this is not a good idea. Yeah. I think right. in six months, many are quitting it. Okay, six months to a year. What's the problem with most startups these days? Most people are marketplaces, right? Most apps are marketplace driven. But if they're marketplace driven, what does that mean? That means you need to physically sell and sign up merchants to your business. Otherwise, you've just got an empty app, mm. right? Right. So that means, yes, it's not that fluffy, I will just sit, do an ad online because uh, I have a sign-up form on my website, so that business owner will go to that sign-up form, mm. sign himself up, right? And we're going to have a thousand merchants on our app tomorrow. Sleeping and... You know, like, it's so easy, right? Mm. It's not easy. The graft, you don't have a shop. You don't have a physical presence. So you have to be pushing, pushing, pushing so hard, but they didn't realize that they've signed up into the business of sales. They thought they were in the tech business. Right, but really, they are in a sales and marketing business. You're selling to get merchants on board. You're marketing to get customers to do transactions on your app. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And and I think a lot of people and a lot of people like now, thank God, I think the mentality is finally changing because for a while, you know, I do say like you know we are in a copycat nation here in Bahrain, right? So no one wants to be the first to try something, but everyone will copy something that yeah, works, which is working already. Yeah. So, how many apps came along and said? We can be Talabat, but cheaper. Business will love us because we're cheaper than Talabat. <laughs> it's true. Very true. And, and, and they're not thinking about... Just last two years, how many apps came? How many came, went, whatever. Mm. I'm wondering how many actually sat, because we did this, right? So I was like, okay, cool. I mean, we, have a, we had a deals and offers app, right? So we can add delivery because you know, our app was based on people going to the business, not the business delivering to you. But then obviously COVID happened, you know, mm -hmm. okay, sure, pivot, whatever, right? But when I sat down and did the maths, me and my friend sat down and did the maths. He has a logistics business, a tech business. I'm like, what if we get your drivers to go pick up, drop off, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. When you do the maths, you're like, man, there is no money in this. Right? The balance sheet's just not adding up here. And I'm like, I have to charge 15 to 18 percent, 15 percent commission to the business to just break even oh on the order. So, of course, Talabat's going to say 25 percent or whatever, because mathematically, there's just no money in it otherwise, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I was like, how many people have actually sat there and done that calculation? Instead, they're thinking, here's what they're thinking. If I'm getting a thousand orders a day mm. and each order is like 10 dinars, so that's 10,000 a day. Now I'm making 15%, 20% commission off that, right? That's a great amount of money. Have they done the costing? How much does the logistic cost? How much is the petrol? How much is the driver? How much is the customer service team? Oh, where's my order? I didn't get the Coke. I didn't get the whatever. Who's in the call center to follow up on these orders? Mm -hmm. You know, where the whole thing, when you add the whole thing, you're like, the margins are so slim. Yeah, everyone's looking at it from the outside. Oh, they must be crushing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So my question comes to uh, startups is like, have you done the financials properly? Mm. Is it actually a profitable business? Because like, you know, like some businesses like Talabat, for example, they're profitable in scale. Yeah. Right? Doing massive orders. And again, we don't even know how profitable they are. Right? I don't know. Yeah. Because like most big, big delivery apps the big ones with the billions, they're saying, oh, we're not going to make profit for another 10 years. But yet me, sitting in my bedroom, I'm going to make a profit. Mm, Do you know what I mean? Because they're always investing, 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 right? Reinvesting. There's a, there's a reason why if you look at, um, if you see like, the, let's say called the Talabat or whatever, customer service, if you go see their customer service office, there's three, 400 people sitting in there. Oh. All like shoulder to shoulder, you know, like busy. And what? 
us four people, me and, me and my co-founder and this one other dude who are going to handle all of this, right? Is anyone, because, because the thing is, they have you're no seeing idea. the app, but you're not seeing the giant operation that's going I on behind this app. Yes. Totally agree. You know, so these are all things to consider. So therefore, don't go and compete, right? Uh, like, there's no point. You know what I mean? Hmm. Go find something new, something innovative. And yes, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Hmm. And what do I mean by this? Instead of kind of like thinking about reinventing the wheel or coming up with a new idea hmm. that no one's ever done, because that's very, very, very difficult to do, hmm. right? Because every idea you've ever had that you thought was unique, as soon as you Google it, like, oh, it's already there, right? Mm. If you ever had a product idea, for example, you Google it, oh, it's on Alibaba already. Mm. You know what I mean? Someone's already thought about mm-hmm. it. Cool, nothing wrong with that. So instead of trying to like reinvent the wheel, go look at what's worked in Japan. Mm. Like go somewhere random even. Don't even look at America because everyone looks at America, right? Yes. What are the top 100 startups in Switzerland today? Mm, mm. These random places that we haven't thought about because of the language or whatever. They're not as popular, let's say. Okay. What about Australia? What are the, what's the top 50 startups in Australia right now? Mm, mm, Right. mm, mm. And you look at that and they have innovative stuff going on. Right. Mm, mm, mm. Like, cool. That's a great idea. That doesn't exist in Bahrain on the region. Let me do that concept. Maybe slightly tweak it to the local market. Launch that. Mm. Now you've got, because, What's happened is, instead of me risking my capital, my investors, and my time to validate whether an idea is good or not, yeah. it's already been validated in Australia for me. Someone's yes. already spent millions on it over there, mm-hmm. and it's working, and it's in demand, mm. and it doesn't exist here. Cool. Don't need to reinvent the wheel. That is where I find, that's why I get inspired. Do, do your local version. That is much better than copying something. Or, of course, or, I mean any of these, any of the big apps you're talking about uh, locally. Yes, yes. None of them. Are, none of them are new. Yes. None of them innovative. Yes. Tell me one app that was unique. Yes. Whether you're talking about a food delivery, which is already exists around the world from before. Before. Yeah. Whether you're talking about a taxi, which already exists everywhere in the world. Exactly. Right. Tell me one big app or flower delivery, flowered like like that's innovative. That's not innovative. But it's needed and it works and there's, it's already validated. Right. So you don't need to sit and stress your brain so much on what is totally new, mm. but see what is profitable yes. and working somewhere else already. Hold on, picture. And just make your local version of that. And don't, and, and, you know, don't let that be something that already is, don't compete here. Mm. That is your innovation. Your innovation is taking a validated idea from somewhere else and launching a local version of it. <laughs> nice. That's it. It's like if you look at like souk.com. Yeah. How much did Amazon buy souk for? A couple of billion, whatever it was, right? Mm. But souk was originally a copy of eBay, but mm. the local version. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I then see. it turned into that from, went from the eBay model to the Amazon model, and Amazon bought it. So that's what I would say to these startups. And when, and when they're saying with the cash, okay. Invest in yourself first. Yeah. And what do I mean Big by time. that? Yeah. You, as a startup, owner, as a founder, need to be super confident. Because your job, more than the tech or whatever you're selling, is to sell yourself. Right. Why would I invest in you if you can't sell yourself to me? Mm-hmm. You know when you go to these events, you need to own the room. You need to, your presentation needs to be spot on and yeah. you as an individual need to come across as very smart and articulate. Yes. Because if, I'm telling you, you could have the best idea in the world. Yes. But if you don't come across well as a human being, yes. if I don't have faith in you, mm. right, that you can go and execute this idea, then we don't care how good your idea is because mm. you're investing in the entrepreneur first, the idea second. Yes. So... Invest in yourself to be able to come across as that confident entrepreneur to everyone else. What I understand from you is that I think communication is the first thing. Communication is everything. Cash flow comes next. Exactly. Everything is communication. So like, you know, people are like, oh, no one's going to... I would not invest. A lot of... I'm sorry. Like a lot of people who have this problem of like can't get investment. It's like, I I wouldn't invest in you. No. Learn how to speak clearly, concisely. Come across as a smart person, yes. right? You're asking for money. So when you're asking for money, what you're really asking for is trust. Yes. 
Now, if you're asking for trust, how do you build trust with someone? Right? Yes. So, in a friendship, for you, when you're meeting new people, it's hard to make new friends because you don't trust them yet, right? Right. And there's no money involved. Mm. So, when you're asking for investment, the trust needs to be even higher. We don't have to like you, mm. but I have to respect you. Right. Does that make sense? Nice. You've got to earn respect. Yes. That's where, you know, the podcast is basically focusing, you know, the context, why you're doing it and how you're doing it. And basically how it is really connecting with the reality also. You know, it's not just like, you know, you just say your opinions or anything. It has to be fact-based. It has to be clearly distinct, which is what I like about you Eddie, in communication part. So uh, any new tangent, if I want to ask is uh, about technology now. So the blockchain and AI, you have been uh, interviewing many guys related to those. I, <laughs> and it's... on the podcast side, what are your experience on the podcast highlights? If you can share, you know, so that, you know, we can get a picture like how it is going for the future. Yeah. You, know, you know, it's really interesting because it's all been very unintentional that we've had a lot of crypto yeah, guys, yeah, so NFTs, whatever, come it was on the, fun watching come on the them. podcast. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, Omar, my co-host, he loves this stuff, right? Uh-huh. And me, I'm always like, guys, this. Oh, and basically, I was seeing you I, pulling their legs. Yeah, yeah. and I'm always, <laughs> like, I'm always like, Omar, please don't bring up NFTs on the next <laughs> one. Yeah, like, do not ask the question about. <laughs> really? Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting area. I mean, you've seen the market, right? There's a lot going on in that space. Right, I personally am not an investor in that space, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because I'm just the same reason why I'm not an investor in forex or stocks, right? Mm-hmm, like, um, mm-hmm. it's a legit industry. Yes. But then there's also a lot of random stuff coming up, right? Yes. Obviously, the blockchain is amazing. It has its own attractions. Yeah. It has its own attractions. Has its own benefits. Has its own reasons. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and its own uses. You know. But then there's also a lot of stuff which just plummets. You know what I yes. mean? So it's a, it's, it's, a, a, it's a new risky area. Mm. AI obviously is a very interesting area. For especially like for marketing, yeah. Not ju- if for marketing. Even you were telling me. That uh, oh you 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 know if you could have the cameras everything switched automatically yeah, that's using yeah. AI makes your job a lot easier yes. you know what I mean um, go even, life man <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. even like the debt collector that we interviewed on the podcast was saying mm. that mm. the in China the number one was it China or Japan I think China that like their number one agent for collecting debts was a robot it wasn't a person it was all AI driven. Wow. You know, because obviously, you know, there's no, it's like a Siri version, you know what I mean, of collecting mm. debts. Because like, there's no human involvement, right? And it's like, if you, yeah. and so like, there's no emotions involved. So you could just smash just it out, them. you know what I mean? <laughs> just like we use emails sometimes. <laughs> exactly. I exactly. just keep it automatic, you exactly. know. Like, if you're not paying, if it's the next email. If they're not replying, the well, next email. Exactly. So, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, so technology uh, is there, you know. So I think technology is amazing. And I think like, you know, the development speed now is, very Huge. drastic. Drastic. Yeah. I mean, Web 3.0 by itself, I see as a scary world that we're going into. Five years from now, we're going to leave our sofa. That is a whole question by itself. You know what I mean? <laughs> when, when, when these VR headsets are not headsets anymore and they're like contact lenses or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can see everything like in high definition as if we're sitting here in real life. Would I then ever leave my house? You know, mm. when I could be in Paris right now? Mm, or whatever mm, it's mm. all in our head it's all like we're going into the matrix you know what i mean so exactly so it's a very interesting and scary also. scary also yeah because already if you look at like with our kids they're all like glued to their phones they're glued to youtube Fortnite, whatever the video games and all this stuff they're not active and going out anymore right so what what is the next 10 years going to look like you know what i mean so, like if that just if that's last 10 see. years itself is a huge we're going through rapid, transition, rapid yeah. uh, transition. And, 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 the, and, the, and the funny thing or the interesting thing and scary thing is technology and culture and ethics are all affecting each other, mm. right? So 12 years ago when I, was, when I came to Bahrain, I mean, we worked with Zane and they were like, let's do this phone giveaway, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and it was my idea. I said, why don't we do like, let people submit a video, right, on Facebook or whatever, that's why they deserve to win the BlackBerry, right? Mm. And people are like, haram, you want women to send video? 
What woman would ever make a video? This Bahrain, Habibi, this is not Australia. That was 12 years ago. Mm. It's scary to think this. 12 years ago, yes. with her hijab and everything, it's like, no, women can't do that. Well, other men are going to see her, blah, blah, blah. And so, what in 12 years, with, as technology improved, as Instagram came along, social media came along. The morale has gone down. Now it's normal to like post anything, right? So that conversation of a woman can't even have a social account back then without being private, you know what I mean? Yes. In 12 years, it's completely changed. So what is the next 12 years? So, you know, now it's like in the metaverse, well, it's not even you, right? Yes. Metaverse can be any character you want. So you can... You can get the feel of whatever your Whatever your imagination is, whatever you see yourself as, you can go present yourself in the metaverse as that no one even knows it's you. Right? I don't know. Um, so, I'm, so means, I'm like, you know, even if I'm imagining this, tomorrow there might be a suit where you're wearing the suit and you can feel. It exists. This exists. It's already existing. Yeah. This exists. <laughs> Sexual versions of this exist. Uh, right? <laughs> Would we even want a woman in, our, in 10 years? That's going to be... If, if I could have the hottest girl ever in the metaverse and it feels real and it looks real, then would I even want a real woman in my life? Mm. You know, this is like the... God knows where we're going with this. You know? Because it's all the feel and stuff. Yeah. It, 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 it's, 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 a crazy, it's a crazy world. But yeah, what I'm saying, what I find really interesting is how globalization and cultures change just by when you're exposed to something a, a lot of it it becomes normalized right yes so we're becoming numb mm -hmm. to changes you know what i mean mm -hmm. so we're like okay no this is normal now mm -hmm. so our own f uh, cultural fiber is diminishing day by day or is changing mm -hmm. to a globalized culture yes so where we will go depends on where they want us to go Mm. Right. What What do you think about uh, you know global changes which is happening? Because I don't the, like it. the way business. Uh, I, I, I I mean I think this woke, it's going to be virtual platforms. Yeah. This woke culture that we're going into, like you know, like where they're pushing agendas are being pushed on us. You know what I mean? A male can be a female, female say he, she, whatever, whatever. All the stuff that's going on in the world, mm. and this is normal, getting normalized. Yeah. And I'm like. If this is being normalized now, and it's the craziest stuff that's being normalized, what does the future look like? Mm. I don't even. What if it is I don't going to be normal? What if know? what if it is normalized, Yanni? Just just imagine, Yanni. Tomorrow, if it is normalized, and how are you going to deal with this? Because you are having, you are married, you have children. So, what are you going to? How are you going to deal with this? Yanni? The only thing you can do is just, as they say, control your own backyard. Right? It's like you know. You hope that you can raise your family, kids, whatever, with the values that you instill in them, right? But you cannot... even with that, right, question is who's influencing them the most later? Because you can control that when someone's For young. For some point. When someone's young. Yeah. Yeah. You can't control that later. Yes. Right? So, I mean, sad to – not sad. It's true to say – I think, like, you know, people need religion more than ever now. That fundamental foundation is probably needed more today than and more in the future than it ever has. Because, you know, when, when there's nothing wrong, there's no need for someone to be spiritual. You know what I mean? Because nothing's wrong. Everything's, we're all living normal, yeah. normal lives. If you notice, people get spiritual awakenings when something horrible goes on in their yeah. lives. Right? Where they're desperate, uh, you know, life's like really hit them in the head, and mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh my God, they've they got to lost be, everyone." It's got God, please help me, or there must be something more out there, right? So our moral compass and our spiritual awakening comes through travesty most of the time or tragedy, right? When we're comfortable, we don't need to question, true, because we're comfortable, you know. Yeah. So, so I think what's interesting is that our moral, the world will change in such a way that it's going to get 10 times worse first mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. a moral 
point of view mm. that people are going to be awakened and be like, I, man, there's got to be something more out there. Mm. This is now, I need God now in my life. You know what I mean? Like, you've now pushed it too well far. Said, you took me from numb to, think, to questioning myself. Mm. And so, yes, I think maybe this will result in the revival of religion in an interesting way. And that will be, we'll have to wait and see. But I believe, it's like if you look at any um, religious revolution from the prophet's days yes. or whatever, it all came because of the corruption around them, because there was no morality. Yes. Yes. Right? That's where people They're were starving for something spiritual. And I think... That's where the things happen. We're going to go back there because it's not that we don't know what religion is, but we don't have that fiber, right? Yes. So when we lose it even more... Then we will get the idea. We'll get awakened that? again. Wow. I feel like then the circle will be complete. Mm, you think it is a circle we are in? I now. think so. I think we are now going to the bottom. Yeah, hit the it, bottom. Okay. Uh, but we haven't hit it yet. Mm. We will hit the bottom. Well, when we hit it, we'll be awakened again. Beautiful. Beautiful is said, Yanni. And before I get into ra uh, rapid fire questions, which is mostly about you, sure. uh, uh, I just wanted to know a bit of uh, regulation part, Yanni. Uh, how uh, you think that like, regulation can also help or government can help? You have already well said <coughs> that religion can be a solution only. Do you think government and the regulations, these things are really not working for us? Or it is sold out? It's a bit... In uh, which sense? For, uh, for the positive... Uh, well, I mean... I mean anything, I mean, I, anything, I, I, anything. I, I mean, if you look at like... Whether it's health, the whether problem, it's the, technology. The, I mean, the problem is, I think we've gone beyond that point, mm. right? Mm. Not because of the government itself, but because the way we live now, it's mm. like, for example, you know, like there's a big push regionally now yeah. on Netflix. There's banned Netflix, yeah? We don't like the moral mm. uh, stories they tell and the, mm. the things they see. They, they should either censor the content or remove the content mm. or we're going to block... Netflix. Mm. But how would that help anything? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Sure, you can block it. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got access to internet, VPN, whatever. Boom, boom, whatever I want to see. I can see it anyway. Mm. It's gone beyond the point of being able to control mm. or stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, then, and then when it comes to like, for example, with day-to-day -day different issues in our lives, can it help? I mean, I think people need to be educated more than they need to be yes. scolded. Right? I think like, you know, you shouldn't need to separate men and women completely in order to prevent them from doing something they shouldn't do. Yes. You should be like, no, you should be mixed together, but educate them in a way where they know what they should do. Yes. Right? And I, and I think like, you know, education needs to be a much bigger thing here. Mm. Right? No one likes a scholar. No one likes being told what to do. Yes. But you need to educate people to want to do something, mm -hmm. to think about it cr critically. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, and I mean, that's my thought. And like, it's like, for example... I'm with you on that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's something which we, do, we haven't... Even me, I, mean, I wasn't taught how to really comprehend some things in life. Yeah. yeah. So if, if it was, wasn't uh, you know, gone through my life or a situation gone through my life, I wouldn't be knowing it. So what if we, uh, uh, you know, there is a way that uh, the kids can be know, you know, known how to learn things, how to yeah. comprehend things, how to really, you know, think like a journalist. You yes, know? yes. You know, how to distinguish things. You know? Yes. Now, we are learning these things when after 30s, which is, which is, which is too late. You know? Well, because I think the education system itself Doesn't is teach, flawed. Yeah. Right? Schooling is a flaw. Yes. Kids come home, Make the parents do the homework. <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I paying to do this homework? Like, am I quit my job? Like, you're the teacher, yeah. right? Why am I doing your work? Mm. You know what I mean? No, the kids need to have critical thinking. Mm. And they need to go back to the teacher with questions. Mm. And give the teacher homework, mm. right? There's a lot of, like, you know, like, subjects need to change. Mm. Topics need to change. Yes. The world has changed. Yes. So why is the syllabus There's not still, changing? Still so the the hundred-year-old stuff is going Exactly. On. Why is the syllabus not changing? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Why are they not learning anything about uh, finance, for example, yes. whilst they're in school? People learn how to write check when they're 25. <laughs> 
don't know how to open the accounts. What, what, have you ever heard of a topic in school saying debt is bad, getting mm. a credit card can get you in trouble? Mm -hmm. Like mm. real things that they will actually deal with. You know what I mean? It's just strange. Yeah. Instead, you go learn accounting or like business or whatever in school in a way that you're never going to use. Right? I, mean, I studied business management in university and in school, obviously with the business as well. But what I learned there, zero use to my actual business life. So how, how do you want yourself to be remembered? I don't believe in legacy because when you're, when you're dead, you're dead. Who cares? Mm. Right? But, but if anything, helpful. Mm. So what are you most grateful for? Obviously family, mm. being alive and having good health. Oh, you thought us about the trust also. So how much time does it take for you to trust someone? I actually trust people very fast. Mm -hmm. And I, so mm -hmm. I'm the opposite. You know, people, you either have to, with a lot of people, you have to earn trust. Mm -hmm. For me, you have my trust till you break it, then you'll never get it back. Yeah. So I give you trust till yes. you break it and I don't make you work for it to earn it. Mm -hmm. Nice. When do you really get angry? I actually don't get angry. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's like something weird. Like I'm, I'm a very, very patient mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. If I do get angry you've personally done something wrong. You've wronged me in a very mm -hmm. personal way. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's it. That's a red, like a red Especially light. Especially when it comes to trust. Yeah. It's very hard to make me angry. So if I'm angry, you've really, really, really did something wrong to me. What really annoys you? Eh? Stupidity. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a strange, by the way. Like most of them have told the same thing. Really? I, I, I can't handle stupid people. Yes. Like, like uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, I hate small talk. Mm. when we're talking about nothing, mm. right? Because I always feel like we need to be making some progress here. Yes. You know what I mean? We need to be, we need should to be mentally be stimulating somehow. You know yes. what I mean? But stupidity is what? What is one great thing people don't know about you? I once, twice, in Australia, gave lectures, sermons in a mosque in front of 200 people. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody knows. I, 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 no one sees me as a, like a religious person at all. You know what I mean? So, oh. so no one knows that about me. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I did a, a Ramadan and a Maharam sermon. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. <laughs> so which book has uh, made a profound effect on you? Yani? Thinking Grow Rich. Which is the most uh, like, new technology like, which is going to make any transformation in future? VR for sure. Mm. I, I, I think we're going to live in a virtual world in the future. So really, huh? Whatever, whatever technology we know now is becoming outdated very yes. fast. It's going to be so soon. AI and VR, hundred percent. When I say happiness, what comes to your mind? Peace. Leader or follower? Leader. What makes you smile? Hmm. Quick, huh? Quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what makes me smile? Seeing others happen. When was the last thing and uh, anything happened to you which, which has made you more emo emotional? It's made me more mm. emotional? Yeah, lately. Um, family drama. Mm. Which makes anything which you, you has, it has hurt to you so recently, anything? Not recently, but like five years ago, if that's mm. recent. Mm. Okay. So. But I also had a father passing five years ago as well. Mm -hmm. That was a big one. That was a big one. Yeah. Greatest achievement you have done? I don't, I can't think of a greatest achievement because I feel like I just have so much more to do. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I don't. Oh, how about. I'm not proud of anything mm -hmm. because like. We're not there yet. You know okay. what I mean? How about great? I, I think I think greatest achievement I have done is the kids I've had. Uh, okay, good. How about great uh, greatest failure? The greatest failure was probably my last startup. So getting old? Well, I I feel old. So getting old comes lim limited time. Uh, so what is your favorite memory, Harry? Which always you use for yourself to motivate, maybe? My favorite memory was 
Nhưng It's an interesting one. Mm, no problem. I think what my favorite memory was. I think my favorite memory was when my first son was born. Mm. I actually cried. It's I never cried. Mm -hmm. so, so for me, it was, it was a weird emotion. Mm -hmm. By the way, interestingly, many of them said the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's something it's different. It's a different feeling. It's, it's a different not, feeling. It's, 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 it's cannot like express a, so easily. Also. Yeah, yeah, it's not something you can, and it's not something that ever, will ever repeat. Yes, it's like like one I, time. I've had two boys, but the first one, the is, first one is a different. It's, uh, you you don't know what this emotion is. You feel like you you, you don't understand it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> I, I have to you know really take time to reflect that. Yeah. Uh, what do you miss about uh, you know uh, being a kid? No responsibility. <laughs> so beautiful, man. <laughs> Just joyful, enjoy, yes, yeah. enjoy life, and that's it, you know? Once you no idea what the big bad world is. You always think about why, why on this earth we are getting these many responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Because you don't live for, for yourself anyway. Yes. When you're the older you are, you're yeah. living for everyone else. You're not living for yourself. You're accountable. Accountable for all yeah. those things. At the end, how was this broadcast? I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I was. It was pleasure having you, and I, I must acknowledge that the way you are working, the way you are helping people online, offline, it's amazing. You appreciate every single guy I see. Yani, whenever there is something going on, you you appreciated me also. It's which is like a big thing for me, and when it, which is coming from you means you know. I think I, I really don't like because I also don't like people who like get arrogant or like. Mm -hmm. They think they're better than you, or yeah, yeah. you know, like you know, you get a lot of guys like that online. You know what I mean? Yes. Or I'm too cool. Yes. Too, got too much clout for you. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I'm the opposite. I like to. I, I consider myself a people's person. Yes. If you have watched till here, it means you have liked it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and also follow us uh, wherever we are. Maybe you're gonna have some kind of content which will change and transform you. So thank you so much, and uh, well, thank you so so much for adding such a good value and so many distinctions. By the way, trust me, the questions might be uh, indirect, but there were so many distinctions from facts to opinions, and there were clarity. But whatever we got, and so many validation for me, my personally, I have got validated some of the things which I was thinking. And it is coming from someone like Brother Hussein, and you, it's something you have to note down. This is something I felt like a book from someone. So thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next episode. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah.